But when you look at the situation, a young person mm. spending four hundred dollars on a pair of shoe, three fifty on a pair of shoe, mm. and more money for the clothes, and then every show, every state show, every um person who comes from overseas they come mm. to this show and sometimes let's say if it's a guy he comes and he comes with a girlfriend so sometimes you had to buy clothes for yourself shoes for yourself probably clothes for his girlfriend and ticket money mm. plus drinks now when you check this thing for that event it can cost you easily sometimes at least 500 dollars mm. for that event and these are things people do a couple of times for the year now Sometimes, don't you think that we are the problem and we are the reason why we do not make progress? Well, I'm Hello, good day everyone. Welcome to Tropical People and Places TV. And today we have a young man with us. His name is Mr. Judian Villino. And Mr. Judian has on many occasions um, try to represent his community um, in different ways, different um, problems that affect the community. He tend to bring it to light. And recently he has been very instrumental in educating the people on how to protect themselves yeah, during the um, virus um, season. And so today, uh, let me welcome Mr. Villano one more time to this program. Thank you, my brother. So, we have heard that um, it is the intention of the uh, Prime Minister to open up the country to people from the U.S. around the, June, the 4th of June in order to kind of start with the pushing of the economy one more time especially in the um, ter tourism sector. Um, do you see that as a good move? And what do you think that we as citizens should do to support and to encourage um, the moving of the economy without problems to us in terms of contamin contamination of ourselves or infection? Well, to start off in the first place, you see a lot of these people who was working in the hotel areas, these people lose their jobs and a lot of these people, they stayed in houses where they was renting. So right now they're like, look at up north. When you're up north and you're renting a place for $900 a month or 1000 depending on the place because remember the people have to pay the bank, they have to pay because the house and land and stuff. So these people, they doesn't just, they depend on that to sustain their livelihood so a lot of people who invest in those things they cannot wait all four to six months for the country to open back up and tourism in order for them to make their living so we do not want to let the situation get too bad where we have to where we have to um you know have those people who rent in those places come and you know chase people out of their home that will not look well so the government is coming up with a plan to make something happen but you know it takes a little time to get everything processed so what i want to do is let them start to proceed with it and if we see any flaws we'll be able to speak about it but the flaws start is with the foreign leaders like look down here we we kind of took it serious by wearing masks to really curve the spread and staying at home but the people in foreign countries like america the trump not really enforcing people to wear masks and stuff. These people, they're not really disciplined at all, whether it's protests, whether it's going back to work. Right now, they're still going back at the bar. They're drinking, socializing, and they know they have the sickness running. The, the virus is designed to spread everywhere. So if people don't want to take it serious, the country will not open back up. So that's how it is. So what do you think that we can do as locals to um, protect ourselves? Let's just say somebody comes in from the states and for somehow they were not detected and they infected or whatever were not detected well what that's are something the, you can't control yeah what way. what are the things that you think we can do like traveling on the buses and moving around the country what are the things that you feel we should do or we can do to um, protect ourselves well it starts with washing your hand like they tell you when you board in the bus the handle of the bus 
is what carrying the community spread you know it, it contaminates everywhere so what people do when you board in the bus you're grabbing the handle because remember when you're grabbing those handles so everybody when you reach home what i can tell you in order to break the community spread before you grab the handle for your home because you're not living alone most likely you have to wash your hand you know before you enter your own environment doesn't it make sense because a lot of people they go at the home and they reach there they don't grab the handle with that same door after they come off the bus because everybody grabbing it of course when you reach there you use the remote you put the tv on then you go and you come from work you want to shower you go and grab the kettle to put it to get warm and then your children in the house they don't grab the remote they don't get community they don't get the virus and then especially if it's a little child oh then she doesn't the little child and put that finger in their mouth they then start him to cough so this is how the virus spreads while it's very difficult to control so no matter how we try to try and stop that spread of the virus the way we as elderly will discipline ourselves the young children do really believe in the invisible enemy so all we can do is try our best and learn to live with the risk so um there are a lot of even if we open up there's still a lot of hotels where people will not be starting work r- right away so there's still there will still be a lot of people who are unemployed um mm. and we seen we seen that some businesses will be affected as somebody who has been involved in sales yourself and into your own business what are the areas you feel like young people people who are working in hotels who probably will lose their jobs what are the areas that you feel people can get into in terms of employing themselves so self employment self employment well that is the only thing right now that that is really available is you know growing your family which takes a lot of time so i don't it's very difficult to you know to talk about it. and though the way to make fast money and employment you see worldwide everywhere people need mask so we have to learn to associate with people who sew in clothes and stuff these people have the sewing machines and stuff people who fix in seats you can associate with these people yeah these people will do a a good job at educating you how you can make mask or you can google and youtube how to make your face shield also there are opportunities that i want to speak about but the thing is when i let it out people kind of you know take advantage of it so in order to survive we have to learn to adapt if you don't want to adapt you want to continue to live the same life all habits die hard now one of the areas that um that we be i believe that still has a lot of potential is in the area of agriculture the area of Ooh. farming but the nature it will provide man eh now when we look at the situation um we never used to really be bringing in all of these pigeon peas from overseas now you go to the supermarket and you see a lot of pigeon peas and we can grow that here i heard you talking about that i really want to invest in that also because we where the trees die mm. we have to learn to try and grow it back so it's a good opportunity for us to try and you know grow back the land if we don't grow back the land we will not have enough water in the country in order for us to sustain you know that situation so it, we we have to go back to the soil whether we like it or not if the government doesn't want to do it take it as your privilege to start to learn and i i assure you the world need food so as long as you grain you you have, we will find a way for us to export our food one way or another now um it seems to me that there are a lot of young um people who are not interested in farming yeah because it's a mentality if people always on social media and that is taking all of your time you don't really get to invest and learn into the soil when you in the soil you barely have time to go involve so it's a it's depending on where your mindset there if you always in a video game or you in the shop a lot of things is time consuming right now so yeah no there are, there are people young people who are into farming already and um they some there's a lot of problems that people encounter in the area of farming it is not something that is smooth sailing sickness for example like somebody can be in agriculture sometimes you plant things and when you're ready to sell you can't sell because i know they import a lot from overseas um 
sometimes there are cases where some people believe that the price of the inputs are too high but the main problem it seems people have is that when they produce they have a problem with the market well um first off you say well right now the things that it was getting imported from other countries these things are expected to be in shortage right now because mm. as you can see look mm. at how green sandwich is and just within a month of now the mm. uv then kill all the trees in our island you see how that happening right so the same way we're being affected we're being affected in San Lucia if you're watching the news in the month of May people getting extreme snow in foreign countries right now there so the as the jet streams is changing as the magnetic field is weakening we gonna have a lot of disruption with our crops like especially look at the locusts coming from Africa that's eating all of the food nobody knows what's gonna come knocking on your door so mm. the best thing i tell you to do is to grow your food when you grow food you in zion the virus that is spreading as long as you spend a lot of your time in there you will get a lot of fresh air you'll get water you'll be able to break the chain of the transmission it, it, that's what's best for you mm. does it make sense okay so um i want to get um to touch on some situations that happened recently during the um during the isolation time mm. we know especially after the 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 the, the legal the alcohol was legalized or was allowed to consume we noticed like there were some crimes that took place in the in especially some crimes people committed um, more crimes to me during that time compared to the other times of the um of the isolation yeah. um in denry we saw a situation where the video was passing around where somebody was assaulted under some house there's another area where somebody was shot and all of that what is it with our young people what is it what can be done to help our young people because it seems like a lot of the crimes that are happening it is young people that are involved what can be done at to help the young people um see a different way of life other than that you can practice living ram alone because ram is a spirit when you go and get yourself possessed i mean you know people come and play in your mind tell you go do this go do that and then they end up laughing at you in the process for going and put your life in in a mess so all the time the the alcohol was banned and then we look at how the situation was good people and and the cannabis the smoking and still everybody cool and calm but from you mixing too many stuff under the influence you know you taking this you doing that obviously a lot of people will lose the self-control because the virus is designed to target your weak points mm. in order for you to make your life miserable so mm. If we have our leaders, for instance, there, you on the road, did they given how much people tickets, and then, you know, people have already have the issues. So when you already put in that kind of problems on the mind, where you already have your issues, and look, you know, our law enforcement they're charging you how much money on the road, you know, for not having your insurance paid or not having your your license paid, you know, there's so many things that are happening. So all these stuff turn into anxiety because remember these people they have family they have they have needs you don't know what's going on with them so the leaders is they is the self they really care about so in the end you'll always get you know things happening to people but that the way comparing to how it's happening overseas it's much lesser because look at here look the a lady the last time there she left the child in the bin a newborn i mean not because you don't want the child mean you have to put the child in a bin you can bring the child for you know call the emergency services or tell them you would like assistance and everything can yeah. get sorted out yeah but the thing is life is not as simple as that i know there it's... are things that cause people to do what they do i know I and know. it may be at that time that her mind was so overwhelmed or the situation is so overwhelming that in her mind that is the best thing that she can do for herself well people under the influence mm. so if you whoever you if you're in a relationship with that person and you're you know you're in that house you're beating the lady you're, you're causing problems with each other so all how 
the lady seemed to give birth in a time of, you know, biological warfare is too much stress. But instead of, what I'm saying, instead of just putting the child in the bin, you can, you know, give check on the emergency um, personnel and they will assist you in somehow instead of you doing that. But, you know, that's just the way it is. This is what they call the new normal. You will get people doing those things and we just have to learn to live with it. That's just the way it is when it comes to risk. You will see things and we just have to take precaution. Now, a while ago, um, you probably men you mentioned about um, it's almost like a comparison of comparison of of marijuana and alcohol. Um, alcohol. Yeah. So, you saying that are you saying that um, the there is less problem mm -hmm. associated with marijuana than alcohol? By far, even when people mix it with like cigarette or tobacco, you, s you still see it is much better than people drinking alcohol because. The main thing with the alcohol, eh? look, there's quarantine and people do have food to eat and stuff. So you're drinking and you're not feeding yourself properly. It's obviously you're going to have a mental breakdown, right? Mm. It depends on whoever. And especially you look that kind of heat wave coming down and people drinking and they don't have water for them to hydrate this health and fight off the virus. Remember, alcohol dehydrates the body, of course. Mm. So... That's why I was, I'm happy to see that the rain fall, you know, Mother Nature. When it see things really hot in St. Lucia, it always provides. So I'm so, very proud to see that. Eh? So if, if it is that um, there is less prob if there is less problems with the mm. marijuana compared to the alcohol, why is it then, why do you think that alcohol is legalized and marijuana is illegal? Well, um, alcohol has... People have to pay the license for liquor. People have to pay the license for liquor every month and stuff. So the government make money out of it. So, that, but down here, the government don't have a proper system to have the coffee shops and stuff set up so they can benefit out of it. So, the dealers don't really care whether it's legalized or not legalized. People do what they have to do in order for them to please themselves. But you see, there is a a big difference between cannabis and and alcohol they also charge a young lady on the road what how much pounds of marijuana and stuff but the people were saying it it was imported by boats so that's why they push in to try and close the fishing port so people cannot you know travel on the sea anymore and then look they want to bring the tourists from foreign you know that thing don't really make sense you understand the government they trying to you know push their agenda and then they want to try and stop another agenda so what, what I came out to personally speak to them. I told them, these fishermen, they have the children to feed. As you can see, they have both their vehicles, so they have things to maintain. So if you try and, you know, cut out these people's livelihood, you'll be met with protests and strike, especially from me. I will not hesitate to stand up because you all know how the situation is already with people, and then you're just trying to make these people's life more miserable. Now, I understand that they've been having a lot of crime in those places where people fishing and stuff but is the the alcohol is what lead to a lot of those things you know when people thinking of dam and eat me already or dam and do me stuff already and dam and do me stuff already people people don't really care they just react so i i cannot fight against you know alcohol too much but i mean we have to have it alcohol set up in a way where there's a time it there and there's a time it not there. We just have to adapt. Like there's a dry spell. If the government, I understand that you release the ban, but if you see there's a dry spell and the rain not falling, you have to put a plug on the alcohol because if people cannot drink or get water to purge it out of the system, it's obviously people are gonna lose their mind. So I understand that you want to, you know open the country by face but mother nature does not care about whatever you want to do so you have to go with how things is working out in the country now about the uh, the marijuana mm -hmm. and the legalization of it i was look, looking at a program where even at a university in america in mississippi the people are doing serious research on marijuana and they have started many years ago mm -hmm. In America right now, they are working heavily on even getting different um, different strains of marijuana for different diseases. 
but while in while the americans are advancing their research on the thing in marijuana they are sponsoring for the killing of marijuana plantations in the caribbean so it seems to me like why uh, um there is a hypocrisy going on there america is encouraging the or even giving ammunition to the police here to wipe out marijuana and farms hmm. but they themselves are doing serious research in 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 marijuana they are even selling marijuana as medicine in True. different states True. so in a situation like that where we knew that our rasters were telling us of the benefits of marijuana a long long time ago and nobody listens instead they killed the rasters they shot them instead right now what do you think that we should do with regard to this uh, marijuana thing and how we can use it for for medicine what do you think that we should do to advance so that we can catch up with the progress that has been made up that has been made in terms of marijuana as medicine well if you want to see a difference in marijuana well, as long as chastity there you will get a difference because if he was interested he would have done something so that's all i can tell you our pm does not have any interest mm. that's life it, it, it's a soil thing and for some reason he, he, he He's highly rejective of the soil in San Lucia. We don't see things wasting. But some people believe that um, the, the the marijuana, the whole cropping of marijuana, can bring can generate um, employment. Of course, big time. But don't you think sometimes that there are those people who are pushing for the legalization of marijuana? Yeah, but really, it is not like they're really concerned about health or anything. They just want liberty to smoke. Well, they deserve it when you look at the amount of victimization and stupidness the system put them through. You don't see majority of those law enforcement people don't even trouble people for that. Why, why are you going on trouble? You can trouble people. They, these people are full anyways, so they know what's going on. Mm. So, um... R right now you you as a young man you have been you have been, i know that you have been involved in business yeah. and um there are a lot of young people who are leaving school every year and the government just cannot employ all these people and sometimes some of them look for work and they cannot find so it seemed to me like one of the things that we need to be doing is to employ ourselves to get ourselves employed in doing our own business and all of that and it seems to me also that the system that we, our school system does not really pre, um, prepare people for self-employment. Self mm -mm. And so a lot of people have no idea. They leave school and they have no idea about business. Now, we, I know that you have been in, involved in business. You have been, you know, going to Martinique, get your goods and sell no here. Yeah, so give, if a young person is listening to that, what advice you would give somebody who, a young person who wants to get involved in business? Well, in this country well let me start off with me i never go to i never get to go to secondary i never get to go to college mm. so my opportunity for me to advance myself i did it you know in my environment monitor what that one want and find a way to supply it for them but the way when you go to school they teach you what you need to know in order for you to get a job in a hotel and whether it's a doctor, a lawyer, you know, it's it's set for a specific path. Mm. So, you know, it's 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 just a different mindset. You know, it's not when you go to co it's, it's it's just you just have to just. For instance, all right, you want to be self-employed, you have the internet. You can Google how you can you know start your own self-employment movement. You know, is the technology. It's not like before. We needed teachers to educate us. We have the technology. It's all about your mindset. In order for you, if your mindset, you have to change in order for you to see a difference. Like, look at me as a salesperson. I get up all the time. All I used to do is just buy the stuff from the person and go and supply. Now, as things is not moving, I myself am being forced to go in the soil in order for me to learn how to grow do the food. And then I have to go and sell it. So. Um, I really love the privilege because I get into get in touch with Mother Nature and see how things grow and how it's been done, which is a very magical process. I really love and enjoy the experience. So I will always encourage people to get back to the soil. The more you get back to the soil, the better it will be. Okay, um, I'm giving you a scenario. Mm. Say a young person, they, they left school, they're 18 years old, uh, left school probably sem um, 17 years 
mm. and they now they have been in the house it one year the 18 or 19 and they desire to start a business this person wants to go probably to some other country buy certain products and come down back to St. Lucia to sell what are some of the things that they should bear in mind in the process of doing business what are the places that they're going to be paying taxes what are the advice that you're going to give them what are the things that they need to know in order to be successful in this kind of business well to be successful really in that type kind of business is a nene and power thing yeah honestly mm. because you can be trying as hard as you can and when you're reaching the pot and you know these people don't really like you you don't have a good relationship with them you're gonna encounter a lot of difficulty so you can have all the money, you can have all the investment as long as you don't have good um, associates in business, there's no way you'll succeed. So your attitude matters the most. Mm. Does that make sense? To your attitude? Yeah, attitude means everything, man. Mm. Now, my attitude, the majority of the time is positive, but that don't mean I'll not keep it negative. They have to have balance, yeah. Because mm. if you let the person abuse you and you stop, you, you're going to get run over. It's obvious. So you have to live life with balance. So that is why um, we hear that expression, your attitude determines your altitude. Of course. If you have a good attitude, it will, you will you'll go higher. Respect others and your respect others on your way up so when you fall down you can pick yourself right mm. back up that's why i'm so successful despite i don't have nothing now the thing is um that is a very good um point there because it kind of opened up a topic that i want to talk about hey, go ahead, man. when you look at in our society it appears that generally the girls are doing better than the boys mm -hmm. when you interact with a lot of young men it, it is almost like they do not even know how to address themselves. Yeah, because they've been driven around a lot of bad influence. You know, people who, who red eye, they don't want to see you doing better than them. It, uh, it, it goes a long way. Um, that's why I, I, I try my best to do whatever I can alone because you never know who, who, who waiting for you to push the knife in your back when you they get the opportunity. It happens often. Yeah, but what I'm saying is mm. with girls... Girls, girls grew up in the same households as the boys, but yet still you can see that the girls are much, much, much more advanced in business and in almost everything compared to the boys. Yeah, well, uh, when you look at it, look at how boys can go out and venture, and women, they normally be there to see how parents have to take care of the child. You know, people get different experiences, so it, it, it's different, you know. It's something that the, the women is just more fortunate at the end of the day, yeah. You the way you see majority of parents would look for the, the daughter, they would look for the daughter more than the, the son. It depends on mm. how many children people have and stuff. You know, it's a, it's, it's a strange thing. But um, some people believe that the reason why, why the, the girls tend to do better is because mm. girls have, uh, the way you, the girls are raised, they are raised to, do, to, to complete tasks. You have a girl in a house, the mm -hmm. girl will be cooking food, washing dishes and things like that. The boys, for the most part, they just go to, go and play and point. waste time. And sometimes it's like there's nothing that, there's no skill that they master. It is not like they're going on the field to really play or anything like that, to play sports. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they waste a lot of time doing things that do not help them. Yeah, they, they've been driven away, man. You know, it's just, it's just the way the system is. If you... If you allow it yourself to go astray, it, it, it happens easy. So the women, when I think about it, if I have a bar, if I have a business, is women you're likely to put there because you want to bring guys and groups in to enjoy. So, mm. so women will always have the upper hand when it comes to business, depending on what they're doing because everybody have physical and, you know, there's different ways of doing business. Okay, if yeah. it's physical, you get more men. If it's more mind, you, you get women. But also in um like in different places of work, different businesses, the complaints that I have heard is that when a young man goes to get a job and as compared to a young woman, if it is a male boss, there is a greater chance that the girl will get that job because okay. in instead of the guy. I would do the same. Why would you why would you do the same? Because you never know. Sometimes the the girl have a daughter or you know, she, you, women, women are the ones bearing the children. So when you look at guys, guys, they, 
they are the ones getting women pregnant but the women have the responsibility so we have to push yeah. for the women more no in this case i'm not talking about people with children eh? i'm talking about two people na- both of them 19 years old oh the age yeah 19 year old people going to a place to look for a job mm. and most times see like when when seven girls get a job only three boys will get a job not too sure about that because eh, i'm not really but it what you say that is true but since i'm not really on that kind of task i'm not too good at dealing with that kind of situation okay yeah very good now i know that um you probably were around during the last election campaign yeah. and even probably others before mm-hmm. and one thing that we see during all election campaign is that they always talk about the youth the youth, the youth, the youth. But it seems like when the people get in power, there is nothing new that happens for the youth. Well, they have to learn. You know? so we have to learn things the hard way sometimes. So then what really should the youth do? Because it looks like the youth is just being used as a way for some people to get votes. You want something, then right, do it yourself. Why are you relying on politicians right now? That don't make sense. They can't even help themselves right now. They, they, they're trying. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense? Mm-hmm. But the thing is... Right now, that, that's how it is. Uh, we can't talk about before the model. We focus on the present. It would be mm-hmm. better. Yes. Mm-hmm. But when we have, if we have to develop any country, it is a lot of the young people that you have to get to work if you want to develop the country. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if it is that... You want to develop, for example, you want to develop Roseau or wherever it is that you want to develop. Mm. You know that for the most part, there'll be more younger people than older people. Right. And so you have to, uh, to me, in my mind, mm. you have to find a way to do things to target these young people, to employ them. I have a way, but the thing is, is it's all about me letting my secrets out. Right now, there we have plenty of people from foreign that want to come down to St. Lucia, right? Mm-hmm. So instead of we're trying to focus on letting the tourists in the places where those hotels are. Let's let our foreign citizens come in the hotel, quarantine, you know, get checked if they are right. Let them in the system so they can start to invest money so people can get work. Isn't mm. that a, a good way to, to start? But you make, a very, um, you make a very good point there, a very excellent point. Yeah. Because a lot of times when our governments want to do things they're always looking out to get people from other countries now the thing is there are saint lotions in america england and those places who have money and are willing to invest in their countries but they do have a choice they do they, they don't want to stay up there anymore maybe mm-hmm. why would you leave your island behind for you know a place that don't even care can you imagine you're america you building house and you doing all those things and then the coronavirus just stop everything i mean that don't really make sense people seeing like all what they're doing there it, it's pointless so they want to come back to their home so what how 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 do you think that um we could have a situation where the people in america and those places with money mm. can set up businesses where they themselves would make a profit and young people will get employment because what happened is, you remember a lot of the lands that we have for the, um, that can do great projects, it is a lot of times as foreigners we give those lands to or we lease them lands to. Mm-hmm. So what do you think we can do? What, because sometimes you can see something that another person cannot see. What can we do to get people with money overseas to invest in their own country to provide jobs for people? What are the things you think you can do? Well, let's get started, right? We want to curve the spread of the coronavirus, but in order for us to curve the spread, now that's the thing, you keep making me come out and I have mm. to share the secrets that the foreigners want to do. You see, if we take it that deep, everybody invest in it. So that's why I, I try to keep my conversation limited, I tell you. Because, okay. yeah, because you, you might want to do that with the investor than to just let that out in the public. Okay. Does it make sense? I understand. All right, then let's go to something. So, else. um, um, the, on this channel here, there are a lot of people in America and those places who actually watch that channel, My and um, channel? they are well, yeah, that's nice. and there are people who really want to invest yeah. into Saint Lucia. So maybe if you have an idea, you might be somebody that come they might me. be willing to come yeah. and come um, to me. 
do something with. I'm a salesperson, I'm a businessman, whatever it is, we buy, we ship, we supply, we market the we can do it together. There's no envy, no jealousy. Yeah, straight. Okay, let's go to this thing. Now we're talking about before coronavirus, huh? Mm. We have a situation where almost every big business that we want here we have to get off people from overseas to invest. Hmm. Now there are smaller things that we can do as people, as local people, smaller businesses. Of course, micro businesses. Yeah. But when you look at the situation, a young person mm. spending $400 on a pair of shoes, 350 on a pair of shoe, mm. and more money for the clothes, and then every show, every state show, every um, person who comes from overseas, they come. To this show, and sometimes let's say if he's a guy, he comes and he comes with a girlfriend. So sometimes you had to buy clothes for yourself, shoes for yourself, probably clothes for his girlfriend, and ticket money hmm. plus drinks. Now, when you check this thing for that event, it can cost you easily sometimes at least $500 hmm. for that event. And these are things people do a couple of times for the year. Yeah, now, Sometimes, don't you think that we are the problem and we are the reason why we do not make progress? Well, I'm an entertainer. I, I don't want to say nothing to of, uh, offend the entertainment. No, it is not about offending the entertainment. Mm. It is about the truth of progress in the country. Mm. If it is that we are going to spend our money on things that do not bring value, why then do we complain? Because a lot of times... People vent their frustrations on politicians when things don't work out for them. We know that sometimes politicians drop the ball and they make mistakes. Mm. But sometimes we blame politicians unnecessarily. Because you have situations, if we have situations where somebody will for the year spend a certain amount of money on shoes, on clothes, and there are people who probably have more money who do not do that, these same people then blame people for when they cannot get a job whereas they could have provided the, their own employment had they used that money in a in, in a much better way so what i'm asking is are we sometimes not responsible for not making progress well when it comes to excuses self i'm a business person i know how it is to deal with excuses so i i try i don't want to get too much into excuses i everybody have everybody doing things and then they don't know how the outcome is so like what for excuses uh these gambling machines everything out there so despite you saying you want to invest and then you have that trickster out there messing up your investment so you will always get a lot of disruptions they they out there you okay. can't control that yeah i can't control that no um it's it's some it's an idea i see that we can um actually Mm. get into especially with reference to this um virus situation mm. i have been observing some situations in jamaica where there are people in jamaica who are into tourism and they have like a a place a small place that is not really expensive and they bring in guests from overseas there is a program that i watch um it is called ras so kitchen people already traveling from overseas and cruise ship and stuff yeah. in jamaica no, one is it no. Happen? It's not about a cruise ship thing. No, so how do they travel on plane? Or how they no, they, they travel on plane. Uh -huh. So what the way he does this thing is the thing. The name of the thing is Ras Kitchen. It's a Rasta guy, and he, he cooks his food on wood. He I has know. like some some wooden houses, and um, he he. I mean, he's excellent in his cooking. But people come in from overseas, and they come to his place. And he cooks for them. And sometimes they, they have a, a room or something where the people can live in. And I noticed that there are, there are many people who do that in Jamaica. And the places that they have, their setup is not expensive. And most times it is in the rural areas. They are a lot, it's almost in a forested area sometimes. Sometimes they have some rivers around. But in all of these cases, mm. they cook their food on wood. They give the people the local authentic um, meals and cuisine. And people come from overseas just to go to these people's places. That's nice. And I'm seeing like these places are not things that are expensive to do. And I'm asking, can is that a model that we can copy in St. Lucia? 
and you that can happen easy and the more we practice those things you like you go on youtube or wherever it is you watch what the person do you invest in that kind of stuff yeah things is gonna go well like look at tamazo there all the bread and stuff the business is going well the only thing is is the environment the mm. highway there is dangerous so mm. you know we people have to make investment but they have to always consider about the environment because you know you might want to do something and if you go and do it in a ghetto where things is not slow it's poverty so it's all it's all about your mindset with investment like a salesperson right you saying all right you want to do that there but if you doing something in a shop and you're expecting people to come to you is depending on where you there is only a limited amount of people you'll get but if you know how to drive or you know how to go out there and you know export the stuff yourself you you're gonna you're gonna have a blessing so mm. you it, the best thing right now is self-employment because the more you have to rely on people to take care of your your living for you it's going to be difficult you have to go out there get to know people take down the contact number show them what it is you want to invest in yeah it's it's a process so if you don't want to put your mindset to it there's no way it will work out all right um there's the the mentality that i i, I guess all of us have heard mm. that among um black people there's the mentality that some people have that they do not really want to see their neighbors advance and make progress yeah um i get that a lot do you think that that affect do you think that affect business or do you think it affect your chance of developing or, or, or and growing as a business person it does but at the end of the day it mess up the person self because their mind is full of germs their mind is not uplifting you you have to be proactive not reactive mm. so um you believe that it is possible that um the mentality of the person can affect this that kind of mentality of course, can of affect course, business of course of course because you you have you get what you get and then somebody does come and mess it up then you have to start back all over again eventually that person is gonna pay for that yeah because karma is something it does it business very well so all i can tell you is try your best to keep your head up and leave that person to jail yeah, they'll deal with him eventually now i noticed she. there is a, a a syrian man hmm. i noticed that man every like on many on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, yeah. he passes in the Depends, in the yeah, places right now people mobile. with a bag, <laughs> only Still one bag. Right now? Yeah, uh-huh. he has a bag, and he passes in. I in when I I always see him on at um Lapel on mm-hmm. on on Saturdays and Sundays. I think. Do you think a local person from the community doing that would have? would would have success in business say like a local person a 20 year old whatever buying his clothes and going to this community and sell the the problem with those kind of sale things a lot of these local people or whoever you speak about they tell me the kind of pride that i have doing it they not seem they'll have it so my what i can assume is you know they are the ones like probably breaking into people's place or having issues with you know people is your your attitude it goes back to there again Mm. check it Mm. now me i'm a celebrity i'm 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 in paradise so i'm not afraid to come out there and explore and make sure that my citizens are doing well whether people like it or not so i'll always come out and say what i have to say that's but, why i'm here but um the other thing too is in uh, in terms of selling eh? mm. the business of selling it seemed to be that it seemed to me that as an ordinary person trying to get involved in that business you may be at a disadvantage it appears sometimes big time i'm not trying <laughs> because a lot of the times the people who you're going to compete with are people that have duty-free concession to bring those things in, you're still not in my league. they in they bring in the things duty-free concession and the smaller person who's trying to bring those things in they when even they, when the yeah. custom people probably can be lenient they are not lenient at all and so by the time you finish with these expenses mm. it becomes you have to sell your thing even higher still now there is a situation where somebody told me a while back a business person that um they were bringing in certain um perishable um foods from overseas 
and that a, 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 a big competitor was able to have his food stay on customs and rot. So it seems like, based on the information on the ground, that there are a lot of things that are hidden, traps that are hidden to prevent the small person from making progress in this country. In your um, dealing and trading as a business person, have you ever, ever experienced those things? My goodness, man, you're asking me about that? That is a serious thing. You, what, all what you say, they happening to me. That's why, why you think it takes so much time to grow. The mm. very people who see you bringing the stuff in, they are redder than yours. Mm. Hey, so when you think you come in there and you'll, you'll get through, they're messing you up because, uh, you know, they, they want you to be underneath them or whatever. So you have to find a way to associate and, you know, keep things level. It mm. makes sense. Okay, Everybody so. Everybody have to eat. Mm. Men and power. Yeah. That's special in St. Lucia, whether it's police. Whether it's lawyer, whether it's judge, men and power in the city, praise them, like it, share it, you'll know the vibe. <laughs> so, um, well, if that is uh, the yeah, if yeah. that is the case, uh, and if there are all these hindrances and all of these things, and they know that, why then are they blaming the young people for everything? Don't worry about blame. Let people blame. Because sometimes that person do that crime, they walk away. You know, that one do that you know, bring in that they still get away. So I, I don't get myself involved in too many things. I my what I want to get myself involved is, you know, getting my people, you know, educated so we can get the country up and running and when we have to shut it down, shut it down. We, it's an open and closed process. We have to just live with the risk. So how yeah. do you what methods you what style are you going to use to educate your people? What style do I use? Uh, what style? What what media are you going to use to educate your people on these different things? Well, I know, I well, notice. You can visit me on Facebook. The name is Gaso Prince. I'm posting live videos all the time of how we can get our economy back up and running. So you see, in the government coming out trying to make themselves look like is they are the ones, you know, you know, having Saint Lucia in that recovery mode. But it takes me and you to make a difference. So okay. So once again, Mr. Verano, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. It's a pleasure, my brother. Like, share, and promote the movement, people. Keep the fire burning. Always, man. Thank St. Lucia, we love. Yeah, praise God. All right.